So let's dive into the non-heritable traits that account for a large percentage of immune variation. One big one is exposure to previous viruses. Broad serological profiling has revealed that at any given time, an individual carries antibodies to about 10 different viral species. Cytomegalovirus, or CMV for short, is a lifelong virus that has profound effects on the immune system, influencing everything from cytokine production to immune cell populations. One study found that the presence of CMV could enhance the immune response to the influenza vaccine in young people. And mice given CMV had protection against influenza virus compared to mice without CMV. So let's talk a little bit about exposure to previous pathogens and cross immunity. Virus neutralizing antibodies bind to a virus and prevent it from infecting a cell, usually by preventing it from binding to a receptor. SARS-CoV-2 belongs to the beta coronavirus genus of coronaviruses, which includes the SARS-CoV-1, MERS-CoV, and two other human coronaviruses, hcov oc 43 and hcov hku one which are responsible for some of the common cold. The beta coronaviruses can induce immune responses against one another, generating neutralizing and cross-reactive antibodies against each other. Previous studies have found that SARS-CoV-1 can generate neutralizing antibodies against HCoV OC43, which could offer cross immunity and HCoV OC43 can generate cross reactive antibodies against SARS-CoV-1. Additionally, antibodies from sera from people with HCoV OC43 coronavirus responsible for the common cold were found to cross-react with SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. It was also found that people infected with SARS-CoV-2 also increased their pre-existing antibodies against the classic cold coronavirus. Antibodies produced in response to infection from SARS-CoV-1 cross-react with SARS-CoV-2 because the spike proteins for both viruses are similar enough to each other. While SARS-CoV-1 antibodies did not bind as tightly to SARS-CoV-2, Another study showed that convalescent sera from SARS patients that was three and a half years post-infection did cross-neutralize SARS-CoV-2 entry into the cell via the ACE2 receptor. That suggests that SARS-CoV-1 antibodies may provide cross-immunity against SARS-CoV-2. However, a more recent study found that sera from patients that had recovered from SARS-CoV-1 that was collected only 22 days after infection did not neutralize the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It's unclear why there are conflicting results, but there were some methodological differences in these studies. First and foremost, a major difference between the two studies is when the sera was collected. In the study where the, there was indication of cross immunity, samples were collected 3.5 years after infection. In the study where there was no cross immunity, samples were collected within 22 days post-symptom onset, which is fairly early in the maturation of the humoral immune response when antibody titers are still increasing. It is possible that some cross immunity may have been detected if the samples were collected at a later time point. Another difference between the two studies is that they use different strains of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. One was the Hong Kong strain versus the Germany strain. Another study published in the Journal of Cell detected SARS-CoV-2 reactive CD4 positive T cells in about 40 to 60% of unexposed individuals, suggesting cross reactive T cell recognition between circulating common cold coronaviruses and SARS-CoV-2. These helper T cells promote B cells to produce antibodies and the natural killer T cells to target and destroy cells that are actively infected. 100% of recovered COVID-19 patients that were tested had SARS-CoV-2 specific helper T cells and 70% had natural killer T cells. 68 blood samples from uninfected individuals found that 35% of these samples also had helper T cells that recognized SARS-CoV-2 virus. The results suggest one reason that a large chunk of the population may be able to deal with the virus is that some people may have small residual immunity from exposure to common cold coronaviruses. So it is possible the immune memory to previous coronavirus infections may help ameliorate symptoms of SARS-CoV-2 infection, 
but it is also possible that antibodies bind to the virus and do not neutralize it and perhaps even increase infection risk via antibody-dependent enhancement, which we are about to discuss. In either case, more data is needed. This also suggests that the antibodies from, from these common cold coronaviruses may complicate accuracy of SARS-CoV-2 serological diagnostics, as people reinfected with common cold coronaviruses could score as false positive with some SARS-CoV-2 serological assays. 